Now let's go ahead and implement the URLs for these views. And we're actually gonna do it inside of the app this time. So inside of the app, we'll go ahead and do urls.py. And this is where we wanna put it. So first off, we'll do from django.urls, we're gonna import path. And then we're gonna go ahead and declare URL patterns. And it's gonna be a list of paths. Okay, so the first one being, well, just an empty list will probably be the recipe list view. So let's go ahead and import that one. So from dot views, import the recipe list view. And we'll put them into parentheses here. And then the next one will be our detail view. And then our create view. And then of course our update view. Okay. So something about URLs is they are gonna match the order they come in, right? So we want to make sure that each one of these is in a order that actually makes sense as far as the matching is concerned. So the first one is the list view. We don't actually have to change that. The next one is gonna be either the create view or the update view. Now in this case, the create view actually makes more sense. So we'll go ahead and say create. And then the next one is gonna be, well, it's gonna be based off of the integer that we're gonna place into our ID. And so we're gonna either do a detail view or an update view for this one. And the integer to ID as well, right here. Let's make sure those trailing slashes are there. And so if we actually look at the Django admin with the update view, it actually goes into change, right? So we can call it change, we can call it update. I personally like using edit most of the time for something like this. And so the question is, is this the right order? Now, yes and no. I actually prefer to put the update views, these longer paths here after the detail views, right? So the detail view, I actually want to be the last thing it actually looks at. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, we can leave this empty and actually turn this into what's called a redirect view, which is it will just redirect to edit. And so here we go. Those are our URL patterns. So what I want to do now, of course, is implement these in here. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and say name equals to list. This is equal to create. This is equal to update. And this is equal to detail. Okay. And so this is actually how we use that URL reversing. And like we remember back to our models for articles, we did this reverse call right here. That's actually what I'm referring to here is how do we actually use this reverse with some generic URL names like this. Oops, we need to call these names equals to. So that genericness is a challenge, right? So this of course is not gonna be the only view on our entire application that's called create. So part of the reason I actually had the article detail view as article dash detail is to explain this right here. And so the reverse itself, let's go into our models app and we can import reverse like we did from here, simply, okay? So in recipe models, this is where we want to update this. And it certainly has something to do with how I declare this a pantry, but again, maybe I wanna change it later to library. And so the detail view on this case, we are gonna do reverse. And now if I actually do detail and then keyword args equals to, you know, ID of self ID, this is not great at all because going back into the articles, you know, what if I decided that I wanted this to be called detail? Again, also not great. So we do wanna change both of these things. And the way we do that is inside of urls.py. So urls.py, we can pass in another argument in here saying app name, and this time we'll say recipes. So this gives me a lot better name spacing. And so I can actually use recipes and list as a reverse call or recipes and create. Both of those things we'll implement once we get to the template. But for now, we'll go ahead and actually implement it on this and it's just recipes colon detail. So that will now give us a better detail view based off of these URLs, okay? And so of course we actually don't have these URLs implemented on our site at all just yet, but we certainly need to. And so to do this, we're gonna jump back into our main configuration URLs, 
where all of these other ones are, and we will implement those URLs now. And this is a include item. So we're gonna have URLs very similar to this. And we're gonna do it twice right now. So first off, we'll go ahead and do include. And now I'm gonna go ahead and say path. Now I get to choose whether it's pantry, you know, pantry or library or my, any of those are up to you. So I'll go ahead and leave it as pantry. And then the next part was recipes and we just put a trailing slash and then we do include and then the app name itself, which is recipes, of course, dot URL, URLs rather. And so this is the path to the app name itself. So whatever this folder is, and then urls.py is gonna be that, okay? And then we put a comma here, and now we actually have a way to reverse these, okay? So again, we'll implement those in the templates themselves, but this should actually work. Now, without pretending like it's for sure gonna work, what we can do is the same thing all over again right in here. And so in my articles, I'm going to copy that same thing, so urls.py, now we could always just copy our main configuration URLs and bring them over and delete the things we don't need, right? So like the admin itself, uh, the only thing I need here is really just the path. Um, I certainly need all the views, right? So articles.views. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of there, get that out of there and that, okay? So now it's just these article paths. So I'll go ahead and get rid of all of these and all this, okay. So yet again, we still have these like fairly obvious names for URL reversing, specifically for this app. But again, I wanna make it in the same pattern I just did. So app name is articles, and then each name value is gonna be associated just like this. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it in as search, because we called the view search view. So I'll leave that in as search. Now this will break several things on my entire app if I actually implemented these URLs. Because as it stands right now, they are not implemented in my main configuration URLs. So Django doesn't know about these at all. So in order for me to implement them, of course, I need to come in and add them in. So yet again, I could add in articles or I could just call this blog and being articles.urls. Okay. so. These are no longer valid URLs anymore. So let's go ahead and comment those out. And let's take a look at our server. What we should probably have is maybe no errors yet, but if I go into any given item here, of course, articles no longer works, but if I do blog slash articles, that now works, which is great. Uh, but how about if I go into just the article list, still fine. What about the main page? Now, of course, I get this no reverse match thing. So this has to do, of course, with the templates for that reverse match. I'll get into that in a second. The next thing, of course, in the URLs themselves, does it really make sense to say blog slash articles? I don't think it does. I think it'd be better to have just simply blog or simply articles. Now I'm gonna stick with articles in general, but I just wanted to show you that it's easy to just really change how these URLs are designed and it's also really easy to break them on accident. So going back into the articles model, what I wanna do for this get absolute URL is simply just do articles and then colon detail, cool. And so this same thing definitely will apply to our templates, but I just wanna fix at least the articles templates before we do all of the other ones. And so inside of the home view here, this is where it was broken. So it's yet another thing that I can just go ahead and do articles detail and articles create. It's a really, really simple change, but it's, I think, a little bit more robust in terms of how we can design our URLs. And so now our main configuration URLs are a lot more simple. So let's get rid of these, these notes here. A lot more simple, and it also is showing that these are third-party apps or internal apps that are like self-contained, right? So it could be either one, and this is just a simple and easy way to do it. I think that's pretty cool. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue and actually solve the template issue.